That was fun. That was like a 90s kids television show. <laughs> We're back from a commercial break. Right. Bring it. Bring it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Episode 491. I was thinking about oh that Oh, my one. God. 491. That's getting so close to 500. I know. It's happening. What are we going to do? I we mean, never do anything. This we, is classic Sarah. We like to talk about it and then Yeah, forget. we get like really excited. Like I, I even like it. I, I believe I, I like the day of our like 100th episode or something like that. I like went to Party City and then realized that <laughs> that's not how it works. Like it's, <laughs> you have to do it before. I'm like, God damn, I'm a terrible influencer. That's why I can't do this. It is so true. I'm, I don't have what it takes so to bad. influence. I but- don't. I don't. I really don't. We have temporary... It's accidental influence. <laughs> yeah. If I'm influencing anybody, it is not intentionally. I am sorry. <laughs> well, it, we'll celebrate in our hearts regardless. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I mean, hey, we I'm do for you. every episode. Mm-hmm. Um, how are you? I'm doing well. Still in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to come on every single time and give you the update of where I'm living. And that should tell you everything you need to know about how I'm doing. I feel like you're doing really well. I told you before we started, like, if I were in your shoes, I would be not a happy person. If you were in my shoes, you might have wet socks because my <laughs> house is so sweating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I tell you I got the house actually tested for mold? Yes. And pa- turns out in a death trap. <laughs> turns out the visible mold is in fact mold. <laughs> I thought that when you showed me a picture, I'm like, I don't think you really needed to get that tested. Yeah, I didn't think so either. <laughs> Apparently, I did because so they don't sorry. take it seriously. So you know, it's, it's the countdown is it on here, though. But... That is the good news. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, there's like no places for sale because we're, everybody wants to move. So we, we're who knows where we're gonna live. The the future is question mark. Yeah, that's true for all of us, though, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. I'm no different. Than Let's get else. deep. Let's um, get. <laughs> How I are you? Like, well, I would How like serious? to tell the the person here. Or, yeah, it was just one person who okay. wrote because she was very annoyed <laughs> oh, that I, love I um, clear my throat too much. Oh, well. She was nice. She was like, I love the show, but it's very distracting. And I'm like, listen, I, <laughs> it's just dry here. And... I will work on it. What's the thing that I do that uh, annoys uh, uh. people? Uh, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, 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 what's that thing? For real, yeah, because I look, was so we upset all about it when I got her message. And then I thought, well, this happens to Sarah too. I mean, we're all, <laughs> we have to be open yeah. to it. And uh, what I'd say, if I'm not your cup of tea, don't, just don't drink worry. it. That's oh. fine. Drink it. Although, I mean, maybe keep tea drinking would our tea. Good. Definitely. Yes. In fact, you <laughs> should have tea. Maybe problem. with some lemon and honey. And but yeah, I do are you just a little phlegmy? You a little phlegmy? Yes. Stuff? And I know it, it's annoying and I notice it too, but I just can't bring myself to like pay an editor to get rid of the. <laughs> what about what about the old. We're, listen, look at You guys are getting the behind the scenes, <laughs> act, the behind the scenes talks today. This is what goes on when the cameras aren't rolling. Yeah. Uh, what, what about the old move to the side of the microphone trick? You know, I do that and it's <laughs> just very loud. The old and uh, maybe like a to the side and then in the front. Oh, oh, nope. I just bumped it. But Cause you know, I, like. so we do this over the phone, obviously, but like if I muted the phone so you couldn't hear me through the phone, it would still go into the microphone. So it would be on the track right. that people hear. So I don't know, right. people. I'm so sorry. I see. I will work on it. She apologizes. Maybe <laughs> I should up my throat clearing, and then yours will not seem as. <laughs> and then they'll complain <laughs> about you, and you'll tell them to can it. <laughs> yeah, I will. Like, can it? I don't even care. Because like, everybody's got it. I mean, apartment. like, you can't do something. Right. <laughs> I'll blame that. Well, yeah, for real, I'll blame that. Well, but, yeah, because it's probably true. Well, it is true. And then Ren's been like, oh, man, I've had these, like, sinuses that, like, a sinus <laughs> infection that, like, hasn't gone away in, like, six months. I'm like, uh. Right. Right. Toxicity. Yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Woo. Um, okay. So first I wanted to talk about <laughs> the untimely passing of Screech Powers. Oh, yes. A.K.A. Okay. Dustin Diamond. I got a little emotional this morning for like two seconds. Tell me why. 
but in, in seeing the responses to him yeah. and in understanding that so from what i hear he had mm-hmm. uh a uh, melanoma or blasto cell i can't remember what it's called melanoma skin cancer right or no lung cancer he had lung yes. cancer that metastasized yes and then f- i heard that he had chosen to not do very aggressive treatments on it is this correct uh, that I didn't hear. Okay. So I do not know if that's a fact or not. But it it was sad to me a mm-hmm. little bit mm-hmm. that everybody is saying R.I.P. Screech. Yeah. And that plays into the identity thing. And if your identity is wrapped up in who you were when you were 16 mm-hmm. and a character that is this goofy thing that you can't escape... Mm-hmm. that's a real it's 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 that you and i have experienced a little bit uh-huh. of that of people wanting us to be they were like they're like no go in that box yep and you feel like i don't want to be in there and then it feels like there's this dis- disconnect and this whole uh so i i had this little moment of like sadness that creeped up and then I, I was like talking to Ren and I think he probably heard it in my voice and he was like well I think he kind of lived like a hard life and, I, and then I, in my mind I was like that's oh that's what yep. I'm saying and there's a reason that's the symptom is what we're that we're seeing the effects of what maybe we all did to him. Yes Sarah I feel like I'm at church this is exactly my sentiment. Thank you. you because I Thought, I've thought a lot about him over the years because he periodically will show yes. up in the news for something unsavory. And I remember when he was on Celebrity Fit Club. Yes. Yes. And he that was, was it. Holy heck. He was clearly doing it because he needed the money but really didn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And he was defiant oh, and angry and aggressive. Yeah. And I thought what an asshole but then it's what you say how how could he not be an asshole right when he was reduced to this caricature of not even himself reduced to a caricature that's that's the part that saddens me and then of Mm -hmm. course not i mean i'm saying of course like my mother not actual of course (laughs) he would die young right that's what adam said Oh, of course he did because Adam and I always say the same thing. If you ever want to know what how I feel about something, just ask Adam. It's the same. Guaranteed. I when mean, is it not? I don't think it excuses um, Dustin's poor right. choices. Right. Where he did that tell-all book that was just so alienating to the cast. And he never really would take responsibility because then he'd go on Oprah, Where Are They Now? And he'd be like, oh, that was ghostwritten and I didn't really say those things. But... That it, your name's on the cover, and you have mm-hmm. to take responsibility and ownership of what you put out there. But I mm-hmm. get why he felt desperate enough to do that. Yep. What's I he supposed to do? Be an accountant? R- right. right. And even if you did, could you imagine mm-hmm. what going to work as an accountant would be like? Oh, hey, Screech. What up, Screech? Blah, 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 blah. Just I going to the grocery store. Going. Forget it. You right. are a caricature Mm -hmm. you've been reduced you said it that's the perfect way to put it god damn this is really important it is and people don't it's it's that it's the same thing remember when we read handmaid's tale or or if you've seen i don't know if they do this in the movie or in the tv show Mm -hmm. but if you've read handmaid's tale you read the whole book and then the last spoiler alert uh the last chapter is basically like a history class like you're now in the present time and you're in a history class and you're re it's like you're reading this intense insane thing that happened but it's only like two days of the the history and you're like we brush over it and it's like Mm -hmm. oh yep and then but it's like their entire it's 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 you know, I say it even about the pa- the pandemic, what we're in right now. Like, I, what we're in right now is mm-hmm. that scary part of the movie, that intro that's like, you know, they give you a like montage. a one minute long montage of yeah. like, 
we thought it was going to be only for a year. And then everyone went inside. And then we never came out. And blah, 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 blah. Then the sun went away. And, like, that kind of shit. Ooh, it gives mm-hmm. me goosebumps. And we, like, say all of that in, like, one minute. But it's really the – all of these just experiences that were, were just – in, intense formative, and, yeah. and formative and mm-hmm. that's it it's like he just get i don't know it's yeah i have real compassion for him because all of the other people on the show were you know traditionally attractive conventionally attractive and so they had more opportunities to reinvent themselves do other things after but not only did he have more of a not hollywood look but he was also costumed to be like a yes. cartoon character yeah yeah i mean and his name was square he, he just became it's like urkel but like with, it's it, it yes when you become one of those characters if you don't have a firm foundation at home i don't know mm-hmm. dustin's but i would be inclined to think maybe yeah. there wasn't a firm foundation there agreed and then it can take oh, a really dark agreed. turn <gasps> oh my gosh Let's take Ooh, a minute that to talk makes about me... Monk Pack, shall we? Yes. Oh, my God. Sue's delicious. Yes, they that's a good so change. They are so good. They're so good. And every single time I try a new flavor, I, I'm always like, I, you know, I don't like change, maybe. And so I'm like, <laughs> oh, what's this new flavor I'll have to try? And then I'm like, damn, this one's better than the last. They're Peanut all butter really and good. chocolate chunk. Hello. I don't have, I didn't try any that I was like, oh, this isn't my favorite. They're all really good and they are so Lincoln low in Lincoln was so sugar. funny when he's like, this is my favorite one of all of yours. <laughs> we just filmed a video because he's like, maybe I should tell the Brainiacs about it. I'm like, okay, so maybe I'll put that up. Oh my up. God. Um, <laughs> he's like their ambassador. And talk about honest review. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He's not going to lie. From the it's, mouths of babes. It's just a great late night treat or... You know, a snack during the day, quick breakfast, whatever. The taste is incredible. But I just like that they have really low sugar and they can be great for a keto lifestyle as well if you happen to be into that. Try it for yourself and you'll see. And we have a special deal for for our listeners. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering code CANDY at checkout. And Monk Pack is so confident in their product, it's back with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll exchange the product or refund your money, whichever you prefer. To get started, just go to monkpack.com. That's M-U-N-K-P-A-C-K.com and enter. Uh, select any product, then enter the code CANDY at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. Monk Pack, delicious, nutritious food you can count on. Thank you for sponsoring us, Monk Pack. Yay, thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Yeah, so that got me down and... Yeah. I'm, I, I am, I mean, I'm sad that we both have to have this view of it, but I'm also glad that you see it in the same way that I do like that because it's, you know... I was it if you maybe don't have a little taste of what that's like it's very easy to just throw somebody into the oh well you know kind of like he did it to himself sort of thing or I saw how he was on celebrity fit club or you know and that's just we're seeing the the symptom yeah and like <sighs> you said we've experienced just a tiny little yeah, f- that kind of feeling. So I can't mm-hmm. imagine what it's like for him. But it's oh, sad too, awful. like knowing that that's human nature. That we, like, if we were to see him out, like even when we saw Mister Belding, I heart, know we all did. We did, yes, I do. Like we call him Mister Belding, right? <laughs> Dennis <sighs> Haskins. Okay, you know, this is interesting because mm-hmm. I. I had this talk once with an actor about how if people don't like us on reality television, Mm -hmm. it is really hard to take because they're saying they don't like us. Yeah. If they don't like, if you are a character Mm -hmm. on a TV show and they don't like you, it's easier to maybe distance yourself Mm -hmm. from that because they say... Oh, I don't, you know, oh, you were such a dick, but you're like, oh, well, that's my character. He doesn't really know who I am. Right. And so they have it better in that way. Yeah. But then if you, the Mm -hmm. character you play is, and you can't ever escape it, it's lose-lose, really. Yeah, because even if they love you, they don't love you. They love Right. It goes both ways. Yeah. 
Ay, ay, ay. Uh-huh. Yeah, It's yeah. the admiration. They love my character, not me. Right. And you know what? Who yeah. the hell am I without my character? Those yeah. are big questions. Well, now that makes me like Annie Potts even more. God, I love her, Sarah. <laughs> because, yeah. I, I am too. not okay. I have been <laughs> reeling ever since that interview. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I love you. Yeah. I was like, what is wrong with me? I can't stop thinking about her. <laughs> I'm thinking about her, for goodness <laughs> sakes. Got us all doing it. We're all fans. My God. I need yeah, to get a grip, get though. Okay, let's move get on. Get a grip, Suze. <laughs> I read this fantastic article in the New York Times, and the title was about what coronavirus can teach us about our sense of smell, because you know how that's one of the Uh-huh. Symptoms. I question every day. I'm like, <laughs> is it gone? Yeah. Is it just, do I just have a stuffy nose? Is my cooking bland? <laughs> All of these are things bland. I've gone through. Right. Do I just need uh, to season this better? Yes. So... It was such a great article, though, and I just wanted to read some of the things that I learned from it because I think we often think of smell as maybe the least important sense. (sighs) If we had to choose to lose one, I think most of us would say, okay, I'll lose my sense of smell. Right, because I'm definitely, I am picking my eyes or my ears. Exactly. And so... Oh, my God, good point. This was sort of saying you don't realize how important it is until you lose it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, here's some of the fun facts. So recent studies have begun to puncture our conviction that we are too sophisticated to be good at uh, smelling. So some people think, well, we don't need that set. We don't need to go rooting for truffles like a pig or something. So we sort of don't Uh, really need our sense of smell as much as we uh, maybe did millions of years ago. Okay, okay. Um, But our brains know the difference between Exercise sweat and fear sweat. Uh huh. Damn, fear sweat is stinky. <laughs> and between a gl- a glass of wine that has recently contained a fruit fly and one that has not. Oh, <gasps> well, believe? if that ain't a a, a, <laughs> a necessary, super important. Damn, Isn't it weird though that we aren't aware Sissy. that we know those things. Wait, and we're struggling with the Pepsi Cola challenge. <laughs> Why? Oh we can distinguish <laughs> between a fly? But, like, What's how is it there? that we can know but not know we know? Right. That is oh, weird to me. Okay. Wow. Oh, see, I feel like that's such a, like a metaphor that like the sense yes. that's the most important that we don't really recognize and we don't maybe see as important is the most uh, is like the linchpin and like like mm-hmm. you know and maybe like if. E- you are somebody who works in the behind the scenes or maybe you're a little more or maybe you're a mother (laughs) you're really unrecognized not recognized but holding it all together yes so like i think we even talked about this one time in the show but it just rings a bell did you know that when we shake hands with people that we as a human race um Mm -hmm. unconsciously then we'll sniff our fingers to make sure that, that what? we like the person. Yes. Oh, this does vaguely yeah. ring a bell. Oh, my gosh. That we right. Shake hands and we and were talking like, about in the beginning of the... Because we got to know. We're basically dogs. We're Yes. We like to think we're so sophisticated when we're, we're sniffing our fingers. We're not at all. When I start looking at... Uh, I, I know. I was watching um, Shark Tank the other night. And this was from a few years ago. And there was a guy who came on who has literally reinvented the wheel. <laughs> and they it's like a wheel that's like kind of built upon a cube. And it can like <laughs> go over really hard, like terrain. And it is really funny. And it was really good. Um, and they definitely got his idea. Uh, uh, but when they said... That the wheel was only invented 5,000 years ago. I was like, 5,000? That's really like no years ago. (laughs) That is so true. That's like in the grand scheme of things, the fact that we ever, we are so new here. It's like a joke. We're, I mean, (laughs) It's it's so silly. We got here yesterday. Yeah. Didn't we notice like these rocks roll? What, I like, mean, why didn't we put two and two together? Like, it was, uh, 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 
I went down a whole rabbit hole the other day because I was like, it took us too long to get ketchup upside down in bottles. Yes. Everything's taking too long. What the hell? Even the we're fact not that, that we're smart. still saying like we put a man on the moon, but blah, 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 blah. I mean, we did that 50 we're, years ago for fuck's yeah, sake. For fuck's sake. We need something oh, new here. Oh, God. It just cracks me up. I don't know. Well, okay. Yeah. Every morning, We though, connected everybody via internet and then made social media ruin their lives and create ex- mass feelings of paranoia and depression and anxiety. But ah. we can't make silent dental tools. <laughs> so just, you know, let's stay humble, people. Um, oh, but every morning, God. this is a true story. Every morning, my cat takes a shit and I go, yeah. oh, I can smell that. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't have coronavirus. But thankfully, oh. she is using Kitty Poo Club cat litter, which yeah. I highly recommend if you have a feline friend who, you know, you would like to treat to a wonderful potty experience because they deliver an affordable, high quality, recyclable litter box pre filled with the litter of your choice. And then you just put the dang thing out. The cat uses it. And then once a month, you get rid of the stuff and compost the box. And then they Hello. send you a new one. I love this. I love it too. It's a great Well, idea. I'm available to watch your cat anytime you need with that kind of maintenance. <laughs> and it's no risk guarantee. You can easily customize or cancel at any time. Give yourself the gift that keeps on giving, baby. That whole year, a Kitty Poo Club subscription. Right now, Kitty Poo Club is offering you 20% off your first order when you set up auto ship by going to kittypooclub.com and entering promo code BRAINCANDY. Just go to kittypooclub.com and enter promo code BRAINCANDY to get 20% off when you set up auto ship. That's kittypooclub.com and don't forget to enter promo Promo code Brain Candy at checkout. We love poo stories around here. We sure do. I was like, how on brand for us? <laughs> and Kitty Poo Club good. is just fun to say. Okay. Kitty Poo Club. <laughs> Listen to this. Oh, sorry. I cleared my throat. So, oh, thank you, Adam. He just brought me a tea. He must have sensed Oh, my gosh. My... Hi, Ad. Sarah says hello. Thanks. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Look at that voice. People are gonna Would you die. Like a cup of tea as well? <laughs> oh my gosh! I wish you could just magically make. He's trying. He's voice of an that. angel. He okay. does have a voice of an angel. People are gonna go nuts for that. I can hear him because I just did. I was like, oh my god, Thank god I am. Adam. Okay, so listen to this. Provided. Just love that guy human beings were, would be willing to. If we crawled in, around on our faces in the grass, humans are fully capable of finding a scent trail while blindfolded. What? Yes. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Susie, I, I think I found my weekend plans. What, what are we doing with our lives? Why aren't we doing this what? more often? Well, and also, how come this has never come up on any of the seasons of Alone? Good point. Why aren't they doing this on any of my favorite wilderness shows? Because maybe people like your mom who are have the gift of this, oh, what is it, the sixth sense, then yeah. maybe they ha- tap into that too. They can go like sniff out trouble and stuff. Or, oh. Who knows? Maybe, maybe it's like, so my mom and I will talk about how if she's very... Like she, yeah, sometimes people who are psychic have to balance, um, like being, and we saw this in the movie soul. You have to balance Mm -hmm. being kind of in the zone with being in reality and you can forget and not tend to some of your self care in the real world. If you're kind of spending too much time focusing on the spiritual world. Yes, that makes sense. So maybe because she does that, it and some those senses aren't as tuned. And like somebody who, you know how they say people who are blind have a more keen like sense of hearing or something like yeah, that? Yeah. Which right. I don't even know if there's any truth to. But they do <laughs> say that myself. it's more like, yeah, they, more like um, it's more utilized. So yeah. not necessarily, but like maybe like a strengthened muscle. Totally. And... um. So yeah, it's like you if you focus on one, then it can you know turn up and maybe you, you like others that are a little like if you have really maybe those people are chefs. Totally. I love that. And you might not know why you were drawn to that profession, but yeah, maybe it's Yeah, but you your, just have yeah. Yes, thank you. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Yes, like you have a you you have that innate ability to or like 
Like people who maybe have people who have it with their eyes. You know, uh, we could talk about people who see like a wider range of colors. They become artists. They become photographers. They become, you know, directors. P.S. How, remember when we talked about the super identifier people that can recognize yeah. people yes. really well? Yes. And we took those tests and we did really yes. well. And so many of the brainiacs yes. did really well. In fact, one person that listens to the show did so well that she was contacted by the study. No. Yes. No. She no. got certified. No. Yes. This is the coolest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I fucking love our show. <laughs> Look at what we're doing. We're changing this lives This is the here. Lord's workout. Uh, <laughs> come on. I mean, I'm sure the Lord would like that. Like for real, so, she's we'll properly work. certified now and she oh. can help in like law enforcement and stuff like that. Stop. It. <laughs> I swear. I am actually freaking out. No, my neighbors are going to bang on the, they're going to be like, Shh, you need to calm down. This is the coolest thing. Susie, who right. is this woman? She's on our, in our Facebook group. I can't remember her name. Oh, shout out to the, our super recognizer. Yes. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. I'm so excited like right it. now. Okay. <laughs> like okay. I, I, I don't even, I, I can't even begin to describe how, because it feels like we said this, remember when we did that yeah. episode, we're like, we're, we're going to find people who have yeah. like something that they don't know they have. Yes. And then, and I remember when I discovered that I have synesthesia and it was like, what? Yes. And now somebody else gets to have that feeling. And I and think it's so satisfying. Like she it probably is. knew she maybe was pretty good at it, but like. Had no idea it was a gift. Oh. <laughs> five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Five I'm stars. making days. Yeah, okay. I love it. I have more fun facts about our noses. Our noses can distinguish between two groups of mice that have different immune systems. And, oh. um, you know, like, <laughs> what are you laughing at? I mean, just like us smelling mice. Anytime I get the visual of mice in an experiment, <laughs> it's hilarious. Listen, okay, wait, there's more. Okay, if you take longer if you take longer breaths when something smells good and shorter ones when something smells bad, it's a reliable predictor that someone will eventually wake up from a coma. So like I don't get oh, why. Oh, okay, okay, true. okay. Okay, maybe you can tell me. No, I mean, I have no idea. This is just Sarah's theory. So <laughs> you, I have no idea. But so I'm trying to like visualize. So if you, if somebody is in a coma mm-hmm. and you, you put something in front of them that smells good Disg- yeah, and they or, take yeah. longer breaths. Yeah. Like they want more. That, like you do when you smell cinnamon yes. buns or something. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So somewhere inside them. They're, they're still alive. connected to that consciousness that is saying making a decision about something, really. Yes. Oh. And still in survival mode because that's what it is. And rooted still in survival in. mode, Susie. Yeah. Excellent. 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 <laughs> okay, there's more. I'm so excited about okay. this. And then they talked a lot about how the people that have lost their sense of smell because of COVID feel just horrific that they yes feel rudderless yes adrift disconnected from the world detached yep isn't that terrible it is and like why don't we test kids for smell ability why do we only do hearing and vision my god what if you didn't have the ability to smell you'd want to know i have a friend who likes really bland food yep and i wonder what that's like because the author of the article is one of those people. She, this I, I can't remember if it was a man or like woman. Like a super smeller? No, the opposite. They can't opposite, smell anything. can't smell. <gasps> and they said that you would be surprised how much people talk about smell. And you don't even I, notice unless you do. can't. We do. Yeah. I love becoming aware of something that Me was too. before. You, uh, awareness. I love that. Awareness is the best. It's so exciting because oh we are doing gosh. it all the time and don't think about it. All this is what I tell like I tell clients this, I tell like friends, family, whoever that we are we are brain we're like naturally running on autopilot and yeah. then when you realize that you can get in the driver's seat and and actually control where the hell this thing is going and also the interior lights and the air temperature and all that, mm-hmm. you know, it's the like whole world holy opens shit. Up. Yes, yeah. the whole world. You're like, wait a sec. Yeah. I'm in charge of what I think and believe and hold on to and do. And then, and, and also, 
oh, oh, look at how I'm getting influenced by X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. As soon as I become aware of that, I can make my own choices and I feel like I'm in charge of my life. And it is hard to have that awakening and that, like, you know, it's uncomfortable because, you know, we talk about this. Like, it is hard work and, like, um, uh, what, you know, ignorance is bliss kind of thing. But if you can just, like, make it through to realize, like, I would imagine it's kind of like you've got like this spaceship that's like you've never driven before and it's like on autopilot and all of a sudden you're like, oh God, I got to take over and like grabbing the steering wheel or I don't know, whatever the fuck you use to drive a spaceship uh, (laughs) would be a little shaky at first. And then, and then you would like get the hang of it and it would kind of like stable out and, you know, or, you know, would stabilize or whatever. I remember one episode we talked about an article I had read about how to become better at smelling and it was suggesting you go to target or wherever and sniff all the candles and like name smell what stuff. you smell in the same way yeah. that you might with wine and yeah this article sort of l- leaned into that because it was saying part of the reason smell seems so inconsequential and mysterious is because we haven't developed the language to support it so wow. when you try to describe a smell it's kind of like how do i even do that and so maybe we need oh. just more um, practice at describing what we okay. smell. You know, it's interesting. I now that you think of that, or now to when I think of that, every single word that I think of for how something smells is really just a description of how it tastes. It's, yes, right. It's sweet. It's it's sour. It's yeasty. It's uh, I'm trying to think of everything that would be in my baking, like what Even they say on, on the Great British Bake Off. Spicy. Which really yeah, is peppery. just a taste. Um, spice Pep- and like um, bubbles in seltzer and what was the other thing? Uh, sweetness and saltiness. They're not smells. They're just Those aren't smells. Tastes. Right. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Wait cool, a right? second. <laughs> Sweet and salty are not smells. They're tastes. Correct. Are they? Yes. What is happening? <laughs> that, am I smelling it or am you, I tasting it? So if you lose your smell during COVID, you can still taste whether it's salty. Like a burger <gasps> okay. will just taste salty. Suze, th- I said this the other day to Ren because when I thought I had COVID, but I really didn't. It's just mold in my apartment. But I was my sinuses <laughs> were all stuffed up. Stop. This is a fucking true story. Um, uh, and I was... I had put, I was making something that was really spicy. No, no. I was making something with fish sauce. Uh, I was making Brussels sprouts with fish sauce. And I was like, I cannot taste the fish sauce in this, but I can taste that it's really salty. Can Mm. you tell me if I put, I was like, I can't taste, I cannot taste the fish sauce. That is weird. But I knew I could taste the salt. I am, uh, that makes sense. Because I was like, did I not lose it? Because I can taste salty. Right. Wow. Yes. We are learning things. I love this episode. Don't you love the smell of HelloFresh too? Well, it's good cooking and I love that. (laughs) I love it too. Uh, I mean, have you tried it yet? Are you sick of cooking and shopping? Oh, come on. Well. This is the, this is, I mean. It's the perfect thing. Just uh, the weeks that I have HelloFresh is so like, you know how Obama has somebody who picks out his clo- oh, had somebody who picks out his outfits because yeah. he like recognizes he can't make a- more yes. decisions. I need somebody to just pick out my meal, put it in the bag, put the directions on there. I it feels so good to have the extra energy. Yeah, because too. we are burnt out of making decisions. We have decision fatigue, and I'm I don't really like going to the grocery store, especially now. Nope. So HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips, so you can just enjoy cooking the food and getting it on the table in 30 minutes or less. We had a wonderful um, crusted chick, like a mustard crusted chicken last night. It was so oh, good. Oh, I had that. Really nice. Eating healthier has never been easier because they have low-cal, carb-smart, vegetarian, pescatarian options. And then you can change your schedule, skip a week, whatever. They have mm-hmm. easy eats, which are really quick and easy, which everyone is probably dying for right now. But this is a wonderful deal you should take advantage of. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 10BrainCandy and use code 10BrainCandy for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, that's HelloFresh.com slash 10BrainCandy and use code 10BrainCandy for 10 free meals, including free shipping. Yes. Okay. So anyway, that was just mind-blowing for me. And I love that. That's mind-blowing for me. I mean, ah, the things we learn. The things we learn. And we have a super recognizer in our midst. I midst, mean. Midst, midst, midst. What's that word? 
Midst. In our mid Midst. M-I-D-S-T. Yeah. Midst. And I love that she kept me posted on that. And she was just like, I'm going to take the test. Love and that too. The oh whole process. God. It was so cool. <sighs> anyway. It's, it's funny you brought up um, Soul, the, the P- Pixar movie. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that film, as you know. Yeah. Mm. Hold on. I'm just drinking my tea. Yeah. And Don't worry. I- she's not clearing her throat, guys. <laughs> just drinking some tea. <laughs> Ah. Everything's fine. Okay, so The New Yorker wrote an article um, by a black man. He wrote the article. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was sharing his feelings about the film and things I had not thought about because I am a white woman. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that there's a long tradition in Hollywood of giving, let's say you give a person of color, a black person, the lead, they there's almost like this implicit thing where then the white character embodies them, which happens mm-hmm. in Soul. The Tina Fey character, 22, goes mm-hmm. inside of the black man. Mm-hmm. And how it's almost like they just can't commit to having the black person truly be the only lead. I wondered what your thoughts were. Uh, we and had the same had conversation about, in our house. Okay, tell me what you mm-hmm. thought. Just and about them turning in, having them turn into an animal as well. Oh. Because he turns into a cat. Yes. And how that, and yes, it's a Disney movie. It can be problematic. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's important to, like, again, awareness. The awareness. Look at that. Yeah. Because when you see it, you wouldn't realize it if you are, you and me, a white person and mm-hmm. white woman who'd like like oh, normal but as soon as you step into the eyes or shoes whatevs of another person you can absolutely say oh yeah yes that is going on and i'm very it's about fucking time that we listen to the voices that are saying this is happening who are actually the ones being represented Right, because when I'm, I was reading the article and I'm thinking, huh, I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. But then I thought, well, that writer does <laughs> yes, know about exactly. that. And like that's the same way if, if, if we're writing about an experience as a woman and the guy reading the article is like, well, I don't know. Yes. You don't get to comment. Sorry. Right. You go, oh, look at what I'm learning. That's what you say. So we have to read that and go, oh, look at what I'm learning. Yeah, because it wasn't an indictment or, you know, mm-hmm. anything harsh. It was just saying, let's consider this and let's unpack mm-hmm. it and understand it better and maybe avoid it. Mm-hmm. Like and in maybe the future. avoid it. <laughs> right. Because um, it, it, it said it makes it, the viewer feel like the perfect person would be a white consciousness in a black body. Ew, why? Right. And now, and when you say it, it absolutely looks like that. Right. Mm-hmm. I was bummed out because I do love that film. I think <sighs> they did a good yep. job, but mm-hmm. that's a little bit eh, not the best. Mm-hmm. So something yeah. to think about if you're watching it or yeah. whatever. Oh, well, and, 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 and it, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think it just, it's like, you know, we, we have this conversation with Disney movies yeah. all the time. That people, you know, I've said like, oh, well, I'm not going to let my kid watch Beauty and the Beast and da 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 and all that. And it, what it does, what we have to do is, is responsible um, exposure to these things for children where it like promotes a conversation where yeah. absolutely watch it, but also talk about that. <clears throat> and they were, oh, excuse me. Uh, they were saying also that apparently Pixar has created I forget the name, but it was something like the Culture League or something, and it's just all the black employees, mm. and um, that they hired consultants. And the writer was saying, "I think I know where the consultant uh, consulted because those moments are authentic and feel uh-huh. like the black experience." Uh huh. But it's incomplete, you know. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I think they may, they, I do like that pick, I mean, gosh, they're trying. Yeah. So I do like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I feel like they did the same thing with Coco. Okay. 
you know, not there was, I mean, but like con- consulted and yeah. I followed, I started, I don't have anything negative to say. There's no like other side of that okay, where you okay. were like, oh, I know. Right. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> Uh, but I started following a bunch of animators who are Mexican and like have Mexican heritage be- and were hired and worked on that movie. And they're amazing illustrators and artists and graphic designers. And I just like, you know, when that movie came out, there was something that Disney well, that did and it was, was like stunning. featuring all of them. And I was like, oh, follow, follow, follow. Aww. And I, I loved all of the, um, uh, uh, the cultural influence and, and, um, um, uh, like what would you even call it like history and and yeah all that stuff that went into that that film so. was stunning visually it too it really was yeah shout out to Allie whose baby's room is decorated in cocoa stuff oh that's nice isn't that best colors and bright and fun and she, well and, and her is... baby's gonna speak fluent spanish just like lincoln oh really yeah because they speak in spanish and read her to her in spanish oh, that's nice. it's real cute yeah um, and it is Black History Month, so it's a great month to sort of dive into these kind of articles and books yes. and things um, to celebrate black art and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And please see American Skin again. Yeah, I, yes. I'm really pushing that. Or you'll have to answer to Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, and you'll have to answer to me if you do not try Theragun, if you have back oh. issues or stress. Right? Oh, you say the word and I'm relaxed. <laughs> it's a game, a changer. Well, because if you are like me, not able to go, I usually go to a chiropractor, right. but I'm not going during the pandemic, and it really makes a difference. And I also have a case of the 40s. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. I'm coming up on that. And, um, you know, things happen. And so Theragun is a handheld percussive therapy device, and it just works on your deepest muscle tension, scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. But it's quiet, like an electric toothbrush. And I love that you told me about how it has the – you can connect to an app. Yes. And then it will give you advice about where to use it, how to use it exactly what time you should put on the area exactly the ang- like everything and it'll be like okay switch and move here it's doing all the work of going to a, a chiropractor masseuse for you it is so great try theragun for 30 days starting at only 199 dollars go to theragun.com slash brain candy right now and get your gen 4 theragun today that's theragun.com slash brain candy theragun.com slash brain candy I love it. Ren, every time Ren, uh, like there's a birthday part or birthday for somebody or Christmas for somebody, he's always like, let me tell you about these therapists. He's <laughs> <It's like, laughs> like the door-to-door salesman of them, but getting nothing for it. Just, <laughs> well, great. just helping out friends and making Thank sure everybody you, has Ren. no back pain. Yeah, doing the Lord's work out there. Well, I guess keeping in the same vein, I also read this article from Food & Wine magazine, and I think the title was something like, why a recipe isn't just a recipe. And it kind of made me laugh because you know how people are always complaining. Oh, for Pete's sake. I got I to gotta, I gotta read through a dissertation <laughs> before I get to, like, how, how to make cinnamon rolls. Well, I need to know your entire family history. <laughs> Let me ask Grandma you came over on the Mayflower or whatever. Probably not Mayflower. <laughs> but, you know, so. About that phenomenon, there for must Pete's be sake. people that love that, right? Because why would they do it otherwise? To hide the advertising in there. Oh. This is people who blogged and then they need to put advertising in. And like affiliate and it's all links? like affiliate links. Oh, okay. That's my guess. I have no idea. I, that I, I, I know I said that with an uh, air of authority and Well, that's confidence. very convincing because otherwise yeah, I, think I so, thought, though. who is doing this? Just, who is what do I always this? say? Follow the money. Right. What did that social dilemma or social? Yeah, the social dilemma said. Yeah. Like, if if you're not paying for it, you're the you're the product. Right. Oh fuck. Okay. Yeah. Well, then- so if you're looking at that for free, then then it's the affiliate links and and stuff like that that you're that's really making the money. There's nothing free, people. Right. Nothing. Uh, Air okay. maybe. Well, food yes. and wine w- had done an article in which they did a mo- mole recipe. Recipe, oh, yum. <clears throat> and they had taken a photograph of it, and then it's in a bowl. And then that's a hard s- one to photograph. Yeah, and it's sort of one color, and so they added yeah. um, a splash of hot sauce on the top of the dish, and then they had on the side a little bowl of limes. 
Uh-huh. And they basically were saying, we're sorry we did that because we didn't know that that isn't how you eat it, that that would be considered kind of gauche and weird. Uh-huh. And we're almost like leaning into stereotypes about Mexican cooking rather than honoring oh. how it's actually eaten. Okay, but like, I think about, this is not an ad, but I think about that Frank's Red Hot Sauce. The commercial's like, I put that shit on everything. <laughs> Some people just put hot sauce on everything. And That's- also, we're, a big, we're big lime fans here. We put lime on everything. I wonder mm. if it, like, are you, okay, I get it, though. If you're yeah. doing a blog and an article on mole, mm-hmm. and it's for what magazine? Food and Wine. It's, oh, it's for Food and yeah. Wine? Okay, okay. Then it does feel like you just, in a way, appropriated Mexican food. Yeah, it's like they claim that it ended up devaluing the essence of the dish and how yeah. this dish is not... An everyday, like, weeknight dinner. This is meant for special occasions. And by dumping uh-huh. hot sauce on it, it'd be like putting hot sauce on, I don't know, what's another elegant dish? Like a like a, a, a filet mignon that you have on Christmas or something like that. Or like yeah, a, a roast, special. like a Christmas, I don't know, like turkey. Yeah. And they were saying that, like, that hot sauce thing is more of a Tex-Mex thing. Yeah, it is. It's an American thing for sure. And we're, like, whitewashing Yes. Their food. And it's just kind of not ideal. I agree with this. Yeah. I think if you're good, I think that's lazy, um, uh, like food journalism or whatever it is. Like, I think it's writing, it's not honoring the food as much as it is the flavors that you like, which is just a, I don't know. Well, it's sort of like, it's lazy at minimum. Okay. And white yeah. supremacist at, yeah. you know, at the worst interpretation or, of it. Yeah. Like, we're like, we're going to do this how we like it. Yes. I don't know. It just gave me food yeah, for be- thought, so to speak. I, I, yes, I like that because if you were to take that, like, let's take that same article have you, and, and go and imagine this with the, uh, with the awareness of somebody in, say, like the 1970s, 80s, mm-hmm. they would have definitely put, like, it, I feel like that you could see it's like putting a sombrero. Yeah, like a pinata uh, or something. Side. Yes, right. and a pinata or like, mm-hmm. you know, the, and it's like, that's not, that's just what, I, I can totally see that. Yeah. I can see it because this is just a more <sighs> subtle version of that. Yeah, and I'd say the hats off to them for even acknowledging it and then mm-hmm. diving in a bit about the conversation and how to do better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, there you go. Oh, my God. The terrible <laughs> comedian in me wanted to say, sombreros off to them for... <laughs> <laughs> sombreros. <laughs> That's the best ever. <laughs> oh, I said See, it would be terrible. Right? <laughs> oh. Okay. It said it would be horrible. Mm. Oh, that's funny. Okay, so the conversation about the blogs and how like they put the story at the beginning and how I'm like, mm-hmm. who's fa- who's enjoying this? That reminded mm-hmm. me of how I used to say that I would wonder about solicitors, phone solicitors, and think mm-hmm. like, who is buying anything that way? And then I'd be go to my my parents' house and my dad would uh. be like, hey, Sue, did you see this new uh, <laughs> wing dinger thing I bought? And oh, so, my God. Did he have the Billy M- Wide Mouth Bass? <laughs> That's about the only thing he didn't. He I was going to say, he strike me as that. He tended to go for, like, sports memorabilia. Oh, okay. Yeah. The collector. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a collector. <laughs> I always, like, I mean, once a week, I use your dad's expression. If we keep saving money like this, we'll go broke. <laughs> Right. This is my favorite. I once a week I say that to Red. <laughs> right, he had quips, and it's so, so funny. I read this great article in the New York Times about the spam callers, like those calls that you get where they're trying to get your money. Ugh, yeah. It was so fascinating because it's like, who is actually making these phone calls to try to get into your computer or whatever? Have you ever had one of them call you? Yeah. 
they like, the FBI computer? is looking for me or something like that. Yes. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And really? so they went to India to investigate these call centers, <sighs> and they even interviewed some of the people <gasps> doing the phone calls. Oh, my God. It's yeah. really fascinating because they sort of have this sense um, that they don't feel guilty about it because they feel like you can afford to lose 200 bucks. Like, it means more to them to get right. it than it does for you to lose it. I, I think it's also it, it's that hierarchy of needs thing again. You're Tell willing to, to, if you're, if you're needing to meet your own security, safety, food, housing, mm-hmm. shelter needs, you're willing to do things that maybe, um, well, it, your concerns are not self-actualization. So you're not thinking, well, what is long term? Is this going to be the effect of my like, soul. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. good for my, you're thinking about survival. You're thinking about Phys- uh, physical needs, you know. So you that's think that, priority? Like they're just justifying it because they are impoverished. They're in, and I don't know each of their individual sure. cases, but yeah. I would say that they're looking at that as saying, "I can take two hundred dollars for them because I I need to feed my family." It's just because gross I need because... to work. It's terrible across the board. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all agree. Yes. But it's just sort of like, I think they have to do mental gymnastics to convince themselves that that elderly widow Mm. that they're duping couldn't use that money. I think that the brain Mm -hmm. naturally does mental gymnastics to protect itself without you having to work. Constantly. Mm -hmm. People justify, and we see this in the other direction, when you ask people who have been through something horrific if they would have liked to not go through that. And they say, no, it made me who I am. That is something I cannot relate to. Nelson Mandela (laughs) said it. My God. Yep. Would you you like to not be imprisoned? For no, I this is what and like that he was like cited in that study. What do you think about that? I think that it's that's what the human brain does, it's a protective factor. Okay. I think that we see that it, we are so resilient, we are so resilient, and we are we can get through so much. And our brain wants to struggle and wants to survive, and then wants to reflect on that survival and struggle and use that to accomplish more. That Mm -hmm. is, we don't know it, but it's true. I'll ask my clients, and uh, like, what is the thing that you are most proud of? If there's something Mm -hmm. that they're struggling with, say, what is the thing you're most proud of? Most people, never once, never once have I heard somebody answer something that is not difficult or did not take work or did not yeah nobody says that what you know what i'm most proud of that one time somebody i don't know i inherited twenty thousand dollars no nobody says that that one christmas present i got nope Mm -hmm. they Mm -hmm. say being a mom going to school uh uh recovering from addiction uh you know facing uh uh my abuser those are hard And in the moment, you were like, I'm not going to make it through this. And they're the thing that we are are the most proud of. So we have to – I don't even know what I was talking about that brought this up. And now I'm like on – now I'm like like going to church or taking people to church over here. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, the brain and how it has protective resilient factors. Yes. So we protect ourselves. And so I think that's why he can do those mental gymnastics because we're not even aware that we're doing them. Your brain naturally does that and justifies. It's got to, we're all just trying to protect ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Not more than he's trying to hurt somebody else. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Like to me, because mm, I interview these criminals, so I mm-hmm. have to think a lot about morality anyway. Mm -hmm. But I almost can understand some of those more serious crimes happening more easily than like purposefully ripping someone off financially. I don't know why. It just seems like that's so – It's because it's not emotional whereas like I could kill someone if if they tried to hurt my son or whatever, you know. 
But like this is yeah. just immoral. <laughs> Period. And I'm sure there's you know the same ways that people who um maybe people who shoplift say well the the store has a built-in like uh what do they call that like there's a name for it i can't remember oh what it's like called. oh the loss what prevention budget yeah, like yeah. like loss there's a name for it shortage mm-hmm. they call it shortage and there's a, a built-in but and they'll be like oh well this is already built in yeah we you can justify I any see. like people and then i always think of way way back i think this is when you had the meister piece um when you interviewed or maybe it was on here um when you interviewed the guy from hoarders yeah and he said everybody's five decisions away from putting their urine in jars yeah and it's really so how many decisions away are you from scamming old lady out of 200 yeah that's true and that really Probably is not sort of many. what makes me interested in interviewing these sort of extreme, quote unquote, evil people, because mm-hmm. I don't see it as being that far away from where any of us are. Right. But people prefer to see it as like, they're the bad guys, we're the good guys, and mm. there's a big distance between us. Damn. And really. No, there's not. Maybe not. Woo. Let's, let's wind it down. You know, good way to end on serial killers. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on my throat clearing. Yes. We talked about how, you know, Pixar's doing some consulting and maybe just we need all need a little more awareness. Mm-hmm. We learned a lot about our sense of smell. Oh, gosh, that was so cool. Shout out to our super recognizer. Yep. Yep. And also we discussed the complexities of being a caricature. Um, mm-hmm. When you're an actor oh, and how painful that right. can be. Yep. R.I.P. Dustin Diamond. R.I.P. For sure. Mm-hmm. And just sort of, I think it's good to just be aware as a consumer of media to remember mm-hmm. that these people are people and they're not there for mm-hmm. your entertainment. That's their job, but it's not their identity. Right. Including Sarah and Susie. That's right. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, on that same note, Yes. I'd like to say to anybody listening, you don't need to waste any more Mm -hmm. time, not Mm -hmm. even one second, feeling bad about what happened on Rivals 3. Oh, my God. You can let it go. I swear to God, every week I get somebody who says, I'm so mad about that. I'm not. Nobody's losing sleep over this. So you guys can, I thank you for being so supportive, but we good. So that's thank nice you all, of you to and just say. let it go. Yeah. Cause they when, don't, no worries. Whenever they say that, I'm sure you think it's nice cause that's a mm-hmm. nice idea, but does it annoy you? No, not at oh, all. Okay. It doesn't annoy me, but I, you know what makes, it makes me sad. Like this is like the therapist in me who like they're mm-hmm. the one protector of feelings who I don't want somebody to be feeling that feeling of the, like the guilt or the remorse, like the, not guilt, but like the remorse that I felt of wishing I had just sat down up there and said like, mm-hmm. nope, we're not crossing the finish line. Like, I don't want anybody to even for a second be, feel like, like a little bit of like the, oh man, I feel so bad for her. No, don't, 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 no, no bad feelings in there. I don't want to be the cause of anybody to... I want people to think about that and go, oh, wow, look at how she's like super happy and crushing things right now, even though that stuff happened. And maybe that can be the takeaway. That is really nice. There you go. Because that, I think people really felt yeah. what, what that must have been like for you. Mm-hmm. I get um, it. It's just so, like you are the perfect foil because you're not a right. villain in any way. Right. You're so right. nice. It's stupid. <laughs> well, thanks, Suze. And I mean, uh, I, I really, I think with all the shows being out now, yeah. I've, um, uh, people have, you know, talked to me or people hit me right. up on Cameo and stuff and just say like, oh, you know, you were like my, my favorite and all there. And so I think about the kind of people who are so kind and wonderful, who are the ones who say I like, I'm their favorite. And yeah. it's usually somebody who's like an underdog or somebody oh, who's like, yeah, because that's what I am. They, they like me because they are like, 
I get that. You know, the same reason I like characters that were, you know, when I see that, I'm like, yeah, I know what that feels like. And so I don't want to let, I don't, I want people who know what it feels like to be the underdog to know we don't need to worry about that. We don't need you to live in that You know what's funny is in most rooms that Sarah is in, she is the entertainment. Like she is the star of the show and so animated but like in the challenge house you're <laughs> like the normal one <laughs> right what does that say well you know what that says i pick pretty sane friends no, that's true pretty normal pretty like, normal friends bookish yeah. all of them yeah my friends are so normal and, and <laughs> in the best ways not normal in the best ways i should say all you, right. You it, sis. Leave us a five star review. Oh, yes. Please subscribe. It means so much. And yeah. uh, one, tell one, us. one star for every cent. Yeah. <laughs> and if you uh, use any of our codes or like any of the oh, products yes. that we work with, please tell me. I love when you tag us in that stuff too. Yes. Check out all our new merch. Join our Patreon. We got stuff for everyone. Oh my God, we have so much stuff. This is like a whole family here. Oh my God. We love you. Love See you, you next time. Bye. Bye. Did you know that everyone has an aura? Do you know what color your aura is? Maybe you have a fiery red personality or a quiet and calm blue or green. You could be an organized and methodical yellow or an explosive purple. Come join me, Mystic Michaela, on my podcast, Know Your Aura, to find out all about how your personality can be explained in colors. Mm-hmm.